Hey guys, so I did Breaking Stones of Nose. It is by Eugene Yelchim. It's also illustrated by him. There's a couple pictures in here. Um, the publisher is Henry Holton Company. Copyright date is 2011. The genre is realistic fiction. Um, the number of pages is 150. And I chose the appropriate age for this to be around 4th grade to 8th grade, um, just because of certain topics that they talk about in this. So, the summary of this is that there's a boy that lives in um, Soviet Russia. This is during when uh, Stalin was in rule. And it talks about this boy who comes home one day and finds out that his dad, who is considered a hero in the political... Um, I'd say the the political just atmosphere of Stalin. He's considered one of the, the big time heroes. Um, is actually being taken to prison because he is um, now considered a traitor. Um, he's taken to jail and without um, this boy knowing anything, he you know don't have a dad anymore, so don't know what to do. He goes to um, some relatives. They can't help him. Because he's considered a traitor now, now that his whole family is involved in this. Um, and so he doesn't know what to do, so he just goes back home and sleeps for one day. Goes to school the next day, and um, there's a thing that they do. It's called the something along the lines of being a pioneer of the Communist Party. And it's for the younger generations to kind of get excited about being a part of this and they like they are given this red scarf and somebody of high honor gets to tie this around their neck as a ceremonial um you're in the pioneer group now and his father was supposed to do that so now he's thinking oh he'll be there you know when i get there and he'll tie it and everything will be okay well he soon finds out that his dad's not coming and so he gets um, upset about that and he's sad but he is still um, such an outstanding kid and at the um, school that he goes to that the principal decides that he still needs to be in the um, pioneer um, communist thing. So they give him the high honor of walking um, the flag down, you know, kind of like how in America we show our colors. It was kind of like the same thing for them, but um, he got to do it. So he was super excited about that. Um, and he went to go grab the, um, the flag and he tripped and fell and he broke the sacred statue of Stalin, which that was, um, basically if you did that, you were going to jail and you just don't break that stuff and you just shouldn't do it. And even though it was on accident, um, he still would have been taken to jail if they found out about it. And, you know, he tries to hide, he runs. And everybody gets called in the cafeteria, and um, cops show up, and they want somebody to confess. They just want anybody to confess. And one kid does. It's not him. It's not the main character. But um, he wanted to. He wanted to tell the truth, but he just couldn't. Um, so the one boy, the one little boy that confessed, he goes to jail. Um, and then everything goes back to normal. And then... Um, he shows up to class, and um, the police follow him, and they start asking questions about it to his teacher, about what's going on there, and um, they actually search her desk and find the nose that was broken off of Stalin. That's what the little boy broke when he fell. And so they arrest her as well, and she goes to jail. Um, a lot of people are going to jail in this book. Um, so... He feels terrible about that, and but he doesn't say anything. Still doesn't say anything about it. Um, and then he goes on to um, uh, the ceremony where he's supposed to walk the flag down. And right before he's supposed to walk in with the flag, he drops it and he runs to, um, to jail because he wants to talk to his dad before he becomes a pioneer. Um, and so he goes to uh, the jail and there's a huge line and so he goes to the back of the line for visitations and this old lady that's in front of him um, asks him you know are you prepared to stay here for multiple days it's gonna take a while 
and was like, no, I, I just want to see my dad. You know, I need to see him now. And she knows that that's not going to happen, so she offers him basically everything that she has and just says, hey, I'll take care of you. Like, there's nothing more you really can do. He's stuck in there. You know, who knows if he's alive? Because a lot of times during that, um, the Stalin era, they would just straight up execute anybody who was a traitor to the state or to the country instead of, you know, keeping them in jail because they thought it was a waste of air. Um, but she didn't want to tell him that. And so she kind of just says, hey, I'll, I'll take you under my wing. I'll take care of you. Um, I personally did not like this book. I thought it was, you know, for a little kid book, you know, most kids aren't ready for that kind of stuff, especially now when, you know, some parents are in jail and it's kind of a touchy subject, I think. Um, but you know, that, I mean, it did happen. So it is a historical book. You know, it's important to know our history, not our history, but history around the world. Um, but yeah, I, it was very weird, um, to be saying that this is a children's book and that it just talks about very accurate history f for the USSR and what they did. Um, the only life lessons I, I mean, the only thing I could think of is that, you know, living in the U.S., we have it so much better off than a lot of people, a lot of countries. You know, we're very, we should be very thankful for that. And another thing was that, um, you know, even in the worst of circumstances, you can still find people that are nice, people that are good, and that will help you through your tough times. Um, and for the strategy or activity that I did, I had them... Um, you know, either if they were like the higher level ups, I'd have them write a paper about um, certain things that they're um, thankful for. Um, you know, if they were in the younger group and they actually read this, I would have them, um, you know, do a shorter lesson, like a drawing, do something um, that just so they understand how good they have it in America. Um, other than, you know, when they live in, if they lived in other countries, you know, they'd be worse off, most likely, unless they're in those you know, higher up countries that are better than U.S., but, I mean, here in America, we have it pretty well off, you know, compared to most people, so, I mean, you should be thankful that you live in America, so.